I have an idea and a technique for building nests for our dinosaurs in Jurassic World Evolution 2 that I wanted to share with you. But I'm not just going to show you the nests, I'm building this whole exhibit that they are a part of with several habitat ideas that you can use for any number of species in your own parks. So I hope this video is going to give you plenty of ideas and inspiration. And what I've started with here is an elevated pathway that is only one of four ways guests can view the sauropods in their sanctuary. And none of these four ways involve just viewing galleries or towers because I wanted guests to experience the majesty of these dinosaurs differently. So here we go creating the overall shape and size of the habitat and in hindsight I do feel like I could have gone a little bit bigger with it but for the purpose of this demonstration I think it it worked out well enough. Now I'm adding a little mound over there so that guests from the elevated path can't see what's going to be behind that which is one of our new different ways of looking into the habitat and that is using the hotels. Now I have used this idea before with hadrosaurs and we call that hadrosaurs hotel that is also another exhibit speed build that you can find on the channel it's a whole series but I wanted to use it here again because I feel like for sauropods it works really well and you can just imagine that they're not actually hotels but they're like one of those giraffe experiences. This is the second way guests can view our sauropods and that is by drawing the sauropods close to the fence by having this be the only water source for them. We'll get back to that later. What I'm starting with are just the big landmarks of the exhibit so I know what I'm working with. You know, I start big and then fine tune and add all the details later. So this is the fourth and final way that guests can view the sauropods and it's one of the more standard ways and that's the tour. You can see I already thought about extending the exhibit over in that way. Uh, but obviously I didn't leave myself room for that. I would suggest that you maybe go a little bit bigger. All right, so here we go back at what I call Water Avenue. And it is just a way to bring the sauropods really close to the guest path. Now in Jurassic World Evolution 1, there was a technique to get the sauropods to drink over the fence. Uh, so the water would be outside the enclosure and they would bend over the fence to drink outside the enclosure. I've tested several fences, several other barriers, and it didn't seem to work, unfortunately. They won't drink over the fence as they did in the first game. So the alternative here is to use the invisible fences and have the water extend into the habitat. But it still brings them really close to the guest path. So the idea still worked out. Here at the elevated pathway, I'm just using a lot of rocks because the invisible fence in and of itself, you know, on its own looks a little flimsy, so I wanted to add rocks. And this also prevents the sauropods from walking up the hill, which I felt looked quite unnatural. And I really like that this raised uh, pathway gives viewers a very different viewing experience than Water Avenue. And we're gonna do something cool with this as well. Like this has a little bit of imagination to it that we'll get to at the very end actually because it was kind of an afterthought but I thought that was uh, that was gonna be another interesting attraction if you use your imagination. So throughout the habitat you know I've added some some hills and stuff like that and I'm adding trees to that just to block the view of everything else. I'm adding a lot of the individually placeable foliage as well just for detailed work. And uh, here we go with one of my favorite things which is to line the path with these barriers. Again, you know, it's just to make it a little bit more realistic because in real life guests would need to be prevented from walking into animal enclosures. We all know that they do that and it doesn't work out well, not for the animals and not for the people. So that's why we need a barrier and it also just looks a lot better in my opinion. Just adding even more details to it, you know, some more foliage, some more rocks because that's very important. <laughs> I really like using those long rocks, as you see there, to sort of make the edge of that hill really sharp. I, f I thought that was, uh, yeah, I thought that turned out quite well. I think that looked pretty good. I'm keeping the rocks very focused on these hills and not putting too many randomly throughout the habitat because of course we'll be using the rocks to create the nests and you really want to differentiate the nests from just random rock placements, right? So here we go. We're starting with the nest build and the first step is to lower the terrain a little bit and then sharpen the edge of it. Now, 
I only sharpened one edge because the rest of it is going to be covered with rocks anyway. I added sand because you can imagine that the sauropods have been digging around in there to sort of um, grind down the rocks, obviously, and get rid of the foliage to make it ready for their nests. And I'm using the rocks... Um, to create like this semi-circular shape to line the nest. And I feel like this works for other big species as well. As long as the species is big enough that you can imagine that they would be strong enough to roll these rocks into place, I think it works. So, you know, the sauropods, but also the uh, big theropods and maybe even the big uh, ceratopsians as well. And I'm combining it with some of the individually placeable foliage as well as the foliage brush and just figuring out what works best. You know, we want to fill up the empty spaces between the rocks and add some softness around the nest is, I guess, the proper way to put it. Now, if you have the Malta DLC, you have these white rocks as well, the Mediterranean rocks, and these work really well as eggs. Uh, you just angle them the right right way so you have that rounded shape and I feel that they work pretty well they're obviously way too big but we have to use our imagination here now this fourth nest that I've added is an abandoned nest I had that idea and I thought it worked out pretty well you know this was last season's nest and it hasn't been reused for this breeding season I thought that was a pretty nice touch of realism now the rest of it is making the habitat overall just look realistic and detailed. So I sprinkled in a couple of the different terrain paints and I'm paying special attention obviously to this area where our guests get really up close and personal with the sauropods. So adding rocks in the individually placeable foliage as detail just to beautify that viewpoint honestly. So it's, it's an enjoyable experience for yourself to walk around as well and look into the habitat. Now here we go with the Tour. This is our egg tour because obviously we want to bring our guests really close to the nests so they can see the eggs and um, I, I feel like that's, you know, a, a pretty interesting experience, right? You, you'd want to see that and we're just going to pretend that the sauropods are completely fine with that. You know, they're not defensive about that or anything. Now, some more work on the elevated pathway here. Uh, just trying to figure out what I want to do with the decorations and uh, lining it on both sides. I consciously use the concrete barriers on the side that looks into the habitat because the planters are a little bit too tall for our guests to properly look over. So keep that in mind. I'm lining the side that they're not supposed to look over with planters and the side that they are supposed to look over with the concrete concrete barriers because that actually works as a line of sight and on top of this I wanted to add a, a seating section as well so people can spend more time here because the idea here is that it's not just people waiting for a sore pot to randomly walk into this circle it's actually also the the site of a bit of a sore pot show if you will so I wanted people to have an opportunity to just spend a lot of time here, have their lunch here, and wait for the show times. And we'll get to what the show is later on. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to add a guest section here, so that's why I widened the path on this section. Uh, I lined the other side of it with fencing, because again, you you really want to direct the guest, you know, look at the sauropods, okay? Look into the habitat. And you can imagine that if you recreate this habitat as part of your park, you know, and you're, you're going to build stuff around it. You can use that fencing right there that is right now just the backdrop. You can use the other side of that as an enclosure. You know, you can extend the park out that way. And the same goes for the other sides of the wall of the enclosure that I didn't use. You can extend your park out further. And that's how you can use these exhibit builds that I'm showing you, which are very isolated. But you can see how you would be able to expand upon them and make them part of a bigger park overall. Now I'm adding this little roundabout with water and I did make one of the cardinal sins and that is when you flatten the terrain, uh, you need to flatten it with the water brush. I know that there's a feature in Sandbox that allows you to load into a Sandbox map where it's completely flattened. Do that, 
but still go over it with the water brush because as you saw for this one the water brush actually ended up elevating the terrain a little bit so i had to mess around to get it perfectly flush with the terrain which is something you always always want um because it just looks weird that the terrain is a little bit higher where you place the water. It just doesn't work out that well. And again, I'm lining it with uh, the barriers just to give it that finished look. And also that bit of realism that our guests just wouldn't... Like, if they're drunk or something, off their overpriced beers or margaritas that they protect against dimorphodon attacks. <laughs> that they don't wander into the pond and go for a swim because that's not authorized, obviously. Um... You know, a lot of planters is kind of my thing. I feel like my thing is just a lot of detail, right? I think that's what my thing is. But it's just so important to making everything look good. And honestly, with these single exhibit builds, I can go all out with the detail because I don't have to worry about what it's going to do to my frame rate when I'm building an entire park because that's not the point of these videos. Um, and, you know, if you want to... If you want to build something like this, you can. You don't have to build an entire park if you don't feel like it. Or if you just know that, oh, if I'm going to do this amount of detail uh, halfway through the park, my, my PC or my console is just going to absolutely die. <laughs> you can just build a singular habitat like this and really explore your creativity that way without the, the pressure... And the the inevitable frame rate drop of building an entire park around it. And I especially feel like, you know, maybe if you're struggling with a little bit of creativity, you're maybe struggling to finish parks. I see this comment on my videos a lot where people are like, I start a park and then I just struggle to finish it. Maybe for a little bit, just build singular exhibits like this and get your creativity flowing and get inspired again and test out things. I really love doing builds like this because it's so easy to just um, like take an hour of your time because all of this, it took only an hour, take an hour, build something awesome and it can inspire you for a new build, you know? It can really get you excited about the game again. So that's just like a little meta tip for you right there. Obviously, <laughs> the more concrete tips are, you know, the the water avenue attraction, the elevated pathway, uh, the hotels looking into the habitat, you know, stuff like that are very concrete tips that you can apply in your own parks, as well as the nests, of course. That's what this video is about, right? The nest, the sauropod nesting ground, which again, you can use for other large, strong species as well. Now, the final attraction for which you have to use your imagination is this is the like a little sauropod show. So I'm adding a perch at the edge there, and that's where a like staff, zoo staff can go. They can stand there. There's a crane there to get them up onto that perch and they can do like a little educational show a presentation about the sauropods and maybe using treats or maybe using uh, a, some other lure like maybe a sound cue they lure the sauropod over to that circular area and uh, you showcase the animal to the guests so I thought that was really cute and something that you can incorporate as well but speaking of cute and yeah, what this whole video has been about, the nests. It is something you have to use your imagination for. The eggs are too big, especially if you are going to use it for other species like theropods and ceratopsians. Um, but it just gives so much character and personality to the habitat and to the dinosaurs as well. Because they're not just sauropods meandering about their their moms and dads and they're protecting the eggs and i just feel like that gives a lot of story quality to uh, to an enclosure which makes it a lot more enjoyable for you as a park builder and for you as you're touring your own park to just look at i mean look at them they're so adorable and uh, i also added in camarasaurus in this habitat as like a juvenile you know that's um it's standing in as a juvenile Brachiosaurus, which is like the baby from last breeding season or maybe two breeding seasons ago. And here we have, of course, the the, the water avenue where guests can 
see the sauropods really up close just from the pathway. Like you walk right there and like 10 yards over you see a Brachiosaurus drinking, which is really, really beautiful. If you want more park building ideas, then subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of these videos. Because what I'm planning for the 12 days of Christmas is an exhibit speed build every single day. That is quite the commitment, but I am committed. I'm going to try my hardest to make that happen for you and to just give you a lot of content over the next 12 days with a lot of inspiration for habitat builds, which at the end you'll be able to combine and just build an awesome, awesome park. So yeah, subscribe, like the video, and I hope to see you again for the next one. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs>